together a pilot program. What was it, five years ago we were going to do that? Yeah, it was five or six. Well, right after, so five years ago, I put a, a pilot program together called Credit 101. It was for graduating seniors. And it was a three-hour class on credit. And Fairfax County shot me down immediately for insurance and for legality reasons or legal reasons. And then Loudoun County, I went and did my presentation for Loudoun County, and then Loudoun County said, nah, we're not going to do it. And come to find out, now they're doing their own little credit thing. Yeah, well, yeah. But, I mean, every senior needs to know, everybody needs to know, kids need to know that. They really, really do, you know? And unfortunately, uh, they don't get that education. The four laws, I'm going to touch on a real simple, so because everybody uh, needs to just have, these are the four laws that protect you, that make you, that make you strong in this area. The Fair Credit Reporting Act, the Fair Credit Billing Act, Fair Debt Collection Practices Act, and the Fair Accurate and Credit Transactions Act. And I'm going to touch on all, each of them very, very simple. Again, Mark, I pared this down as your request. This is the credit, Fair Credit Reporting Act. You must be told what's in your file. You have the right to find out what's in your file. You have the right to dispute inaccurate information in your file with the credit reporting agencies. In, inaccurate information must be corrected or deleted. The outdated information may not be reported. That's outside the seven years. And you have the right to seek damages. You can sue the credit bureaus. You can sue the creditors. And if you do it right, you win. There's not a judge in the land won't give you the award because the credit bureaus, they, they, never, they never show up for court anyway. And I've got clients who have gone through the lawsuit process and had things removed because they won't even show up. They just send them a letter say, oh, we deleted it. And then they drop the case. Um, and it's not hard to do. It's simple. It's small claims court. You go in, you pay the fee, you get the sheriff to serve them. Then you get the letter two weeks later, oh, we're not going to show up or we've deleted the item. Fair Credit uh, Billing Act, this one, 60 days. If you have a billing error, you have 60 days to be given written notice. Uh, the creditor must respond within 30 days to resolve the billing issue within two billing cycles. They cannot report anything on during or collect finance charges during their investigation, and they cannot add it to the credit report as a delinquent or a late. So if you get, if there's a billing issue on any kind of revolving or installment credit, you have the right to, to get it verified and get an investigation started. You just got to make sure if you do that, if something happens, that they don't put it on your credit report because it's against the law to do that. However, they do. So if you're trying to work something out and you can't be held responsible, if you don't pay it during the process because it's an investigation, they can't put it on the credit report. They can't charge you extra interest for it during the investigative process. That's really the big crux of the uh, Fair Credit Billing Act. There's a lot more, and it can't be closed or restricted during the dispute. There's a lot more to these laws. I just pared them down. This is the law that allows you to get one credit report every 12 months. You can get one free credit report from annualcreditreport.com. And the thing about this, which is interesting, the credit bureaus, they, you know, they've implemented this identity theft and identity theft prevention program, but the credit bureaus wrote it in the law that if you pull a credit report from annualcreditreport.com and then you dispute off of it, they get automatically get a 45-day window. But if you buy a report, they only get 30 days. So when I tell clients and they have to get a report because the lender didn't get it, they get a report to me, they go and they, I tell them, you know, go pay, go to creditscore.com, pay the $13.95 at the 3 and one because they, they actually monitor, they know that you've received it because it comes through them. You have to go to annualcreditreport.com, then you have to go to Equifax's link, then you have to go to TransUnion's link, then you have to go to Experian's link. If you miss any of the security questions, they'll mail it to you. It takes 14 days. Because they'll ask you, where did you this mortgage, and where did you live here, and did you ever have this payment? If you miss one of them, they'll shut it down, they'll lock you out immediately, and they'll, they'll mail the report to you once they verify. Uh, negative info cannot be reported while the investor, oh, we covered that. Any financial that extends credit must send you, oh, here's a great one that no one ever does. If you have a credit card and um, you make a 30, you, you pay 30 day late and they report it to the credit bureau, by law they're supposed to send you a letter saying we've reported this to your credit bureau. In years, I've never, I haven't seen them do this at all. So again, the reason that the dispute process works so well is because even under the Fair and Accurate Credit Transaction Act, they're not doing what they're supposed to. This is the one I love the best. I actually had a client about, about two years ago. I was working with a, a Spanish lady, spoke very good English, and the collection agency told her they were going to deport her if she didn't pay the $600. That she owed on a debt that was her sister's, wasn't even hers. So Virginia is a one-way recording state. 
you don't have to notify the party that you're recording. But I told her, I said, when they call back, I said, tell them, hang on one second, I need to get my tape recorder. And I'm going to record this. And she did, and they hung up. And then she sent a validation of debt letter, and they left her alone. But still, the practices are still amazing today that they will even go that low to call you at work, call you at home, call your neighbors. They called her neighbors. The neighbors when it gave them the home phone number. And the guy was yelling at her. So they can't call you between 8 and 9 o'clock. Debt collectors cannot contact you at work if they know your employer disapproves. So they can call you at work, but if you say my employer doesn't allow personal calls, they can't call you again. So, and you want to document everything in this, in this scenario. They can't threaten, harass, or abuse you. They can't use obscene or foul language. They do all the time. Debt collectors may not file and may not lie when collecting debts. They do that all the time. Debt collection must identify themselves. The first thing they have to tell you when they call you is, I'm, I'm you know, trying to collect a debt. They don't do that. So they're breaking this law on a regular basis. Again, why does my process work? Because they're still breaking these laws. Debt collectors must stop contacting you if you send a cease and desist letter. There's a validation of debt letter, which is one of the strongest tools in the world for someone who has a debt that they get, you know, credit collectors will fish on a regular basis and they'll sell debt to debt to debt to debt. So they may sell a $10,000 debt for $10. And that collection company will now notify you and say, we're collecting this debt. And let's say you're just a great person, you have a lot of money and you look at it and they say, but we're going to go ahead and knock off 80% of it. If you send us $2,000, we're, we're okay. And then you just send them a check. Whose debt was it? Who cares? You're just going to pay it because you don't want it on your credit report. Send a validation of the debt letter. By law, under the Fair Debt Collection Practices Act, you can send a VOD letter. A validation of debt letter requires them to prove to you their license to collect in your state, their license to, uh, to the money that they have on file. They have to show you to the penny what it is. They have to show you that it's not outside the statute of limitations. There's this whole list of things that they have to jump through. And at the bottom, it says cease and desist any further communication except through the U.S. mail. You register, return receipts, send that off. 90% of the time, those companies never come back to you, and you're done with it. So if you have somebody who has a collection, they go, I don't know where this collection came from. Let me know. I have a template form of the VOD letter with a PDF that I wrote that shows you exactly how to use it. I'm happy to send it to you. Items you can dispute. There is not an item on the credit report you can't dispute by law. You're allowed to dispute anything and everything. I will tell you this. It's easier to get a bankruptcy removed than it is to get a student loan that's defaulted moved, removed. I don't understand it. Student loans are the easiest thing in the world to pay. They will elongate them and defer them forever. But, the, but once you default on a student loan, the government never gives up. I get them off sometimes, but most of the time I have better luck with bankruptcies than with student loans that have gone into default. Because they do everything they do to get the student loan paid back. They'll, they'll do everything for you. So... Um, you have the right to challenge the, we're almost done, you have the right to challenge the, act, the inaccurate information, you have the right to pursue investigation for any negative items, and you have the right to have the creditors remove it within 30 days if they can't prove that it's accurate. You also have the right to sue them, which is huge. That came out not too long ago. Um, you can sue the credit bureau, you can sue the creditors. It's $1,500 to $2,500 per account for violation of your civil rights under 1611A of the Fair Credit Reporting Act. So all you got to do is follow the process, do the letters the way you're supposed to do them, and you will have results. Myths about the crediting aid agency. Credit bureaus are empowered with a government author governmental authority. They're not. They're separate entities. We covered that. The information on a credit report cannot be changed. Some people will tell you it can't, but it can. It does all the time. Types of credit information are impossible to remove. They're not. I've removed thousands. Uh, anything and everything you can imagine. State, federal tax liens. Those State and federal tax liens come off fairly easy. Because the state never responds, and the feds don't ever respond. So if you've got tax liens that are sitting out there, especially ones that are paid, those come off. Paying off delinquent debt, like a charge-off or a collection, will stop hurting my credit when it's shown as paid. It will help the positive points a little bit. If it's an open account and it becomes a paid account, it'll help you tremendously from a lending standpoint because they can't come back and get that debt. You can negotiate this to be removed from the credit report before you pay it. If a creditor comes to you and you want to get this thing off of the credit report and you agree to pay the delinquent account, you've got to ask the question, I want it deleted. No, we can't do it. Okay, fine. They'll call you back. Okay, I want it deleted. No, we can't do it. Play hardball. The third or fourth time, they'll come around and go, okay, we'll, we'll do it. Okay, great. Send me a letter saying you'll delete it. I'll pay it. If you don't ask, you won't get it off, but it does come off on a regular basis. You just have to be tenacious about, about getting them to do it. They will. Request uh, inquiries. Don't hurt your score. Yes, they do. We've talked about that. It's illegal to have truthful information removed. No, it's not. 
If they can't prove the accuracy and you know it's your debt, it doesn't matter. They couldn't prove the accuracy. They have to remove it by law. There's nothing illegal about that. Your credit score has not changed since you last checked it. Yes, it has. It changes every minute. Credit score is always going up and down. So if you have a great credit score today, you may have a better one tomorrow, you may have a back down the other day. It's always liquid. Negative items must remain seven years. No, we covered that. They don't. They can come off at any time if they're challenged. Using a credit restoration company is against the law. Here's the way it works in the, in the ways written in the Fair Credit Reporting Act. If the credit bureau feels that you are utilizing a third party to assist you in credit repair, by law, they don't have to respond to you. Now, my system is all customized, so the letters look like they come from you. It's very transparent, and I'll go into how the system works in a minute. But the letters are written for you. They come from your address. They come with your signature. They come with your ID. They come back to you. So there's no indication that you're using anyone. You're doing it on your own. Again, I built in the refund policy because I don't want, you know, I, I've, I'm not going to burn a client or a realtor or a lender for $395. It's not worth it. If they're not happy, I'm happy to give them their money back. If it doesn't work, I'll give them their money back. But I haven't had to run across that yet. Um, but you've got to make it look like it's coming from you, and that's what the system that I have does. Closing credit cards accounts helps your score. No, we talked about that. That's a big, 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 big no-no. Don't ever close a credit card account. Paying off your credit cards monthly helps your score. We talked about that. Good. Uh, let's see. My system, how it works. First thing I need is a three-in-one credit report. If you have a client that wants my help or you or anybody, I need to see a three-in-one. That's my document. i got to put eyes on that because that's the one thing that's going to let me know what I can do to help. Get a three-in-one credit report or a tri-merge report. It's a report that has all three bureaus on it from a lender, from creditscore.com. I like credit report and creditscore.com. They're inexpensive and they're pretty accurate. Scores aren't going to be very accurate, but the data is what I really need. And the data has to be sent directly from, directly as it's listed on the credit report. And you can't, I can't do it on one report. If someone says, oh, I have a TransUnion report, can you do that? No, absolutely not. The reason is because if I were to send a TransUnion report and I were to blanket Experian and Equifax, and Experian gets a notice saying this account's not mine, that goes into a pile. Where does that pile go? Marketing. What does marketing do? Hey, ABC Collections, you're not listing this account with us. Oh, you want to? Great. Then what happens? That account ends up in Equifax. It wasn't on the report to start. Now it's been put on the report. So you can't do it unless it's three reports. And if you have a client that says, I'm going to do my own credit repair, please tell them, make sure you get three reports and do it off all three reports. Because again, some bureaus, some are reported to, some are not. So you may have a collection that goes to TransUnion, but it doesn't report to Experian or Equifax. Follow me? Any questions? That's really, that, that's, and a lot of companies will do that. They'll tell you, oh, just give me one report. Then they blanket everything. Next thing you know, they're putting all these new accounts that weren't even on there, and the score goes down. So three reports, single report, that's what I need to take a look at. I'll analyze it. I'll talk to the client directly. I'll call the client. I'll say, hey, here's what I got going on. You have a copy of it. Here's what it has, you know, here's what's going to happen. Here's how it's going to work. The client pays me directly, directly over the phone. Visa, MasterCard, American Express, check debit, send me a check money order. Once I get that, letters go out same day with instructions. They walk through the whole process. I handhold everybody from start to finish. Uh, all negative and accurate derogatory items will be disputed directly to the credit bureaus by sending out three rounds of letters. We do not go to the original creditor. You go to the credit bureaus. That's how the process is done. You have no communication with your creditor. None. Don't call anybody. Don't do anything. Just let the letters work. And don't go Don't. Don't go online to follow it. You'll get an email from Equifax that says, hey, you know, you're in our system. We can, we can speed this up. Don't because it, it circumvents the mail. By law, if you go online, they can only, they only have to respond to you through, through online. Now you have no protection under the Fair Credit Reporting Act. You can't track what's gone out or what's come back because they won't be sending you any more mail because now you've initiated an online dispute. So once you start, you don't, don't do anything. You let the mail do its trick. Don't go online. Don't talk to any creditors, lenders, anybody. Um, if they can't prove it, they have to remove it. So here's how the process works. It takes 45 to 120 days. We talked about that to run through the process. Um, we will dispute. Uh, we went through all this stuff already. I don't want to. We already went through this. You guys got that part. The three rounds of letters are customized. The first round is the 30 to 45 days. This letter goes out and it says, 
I got a copy of my credit report. This isn't mine, period. That's basically what it is. It's got the legalese part built in. It's got your name. Um, what, what time of year is good for disputing certain Holidays. Items? October through January. February is really good. Yeah. Summertime, July, August is usually good. But now it's probably not. Well, you know, you're going to have less people working at the bureau. You know, again, they're getting ten to fifteen thousand disputes a day, and in and, and the hearing they had, they get an, about a minute and thirty seconds to decide where that letter's going. It's a one-page document. A lot of people send two or three pages of why it was you can't get anything done. So I would say, you know, any time of year, again, I've built in my refund policy for that. For for that, so if you have somebody that needs to do it, do it. Um, the harder objects later in the year is always better. Christmas time, that kind of stuff is good. Um, first letter goes out, it says, this isn't mine. The credit bureau has to go back and they have to verify that the item is accurate. Now, what they'll do a lot of times, they'll just send out a letter that says, that says we verified it, it's reporting correctly, without ever contacting anyone. They just go to the database, they send out a form letter. So a round two letter is, what's beautiful, is under the round two letter, you have the, you have the right under the law, under the Fair Debt Collection Practice, or the Fair Credit Reporting Act, to ask for documentation. So a second letter says, okay, well, you verified it, now show me documentation. And by law, they have to provide you the person that they contacted, the, the information they were given, dates, everything. They've got to provide that to you if you ask it in the second round letter. And a lot of times they'll do it on the credit report if they respond. Other times they'll just delete it because most people don't ever go the second round. Most people just send the first round letter. And then they come back and go, well, yeah, it's my account, and I paid it late, and they said I did, so I'm done. No, if you send this, they've by law, now they've got to go to the second round. They've got to provide this information to you. If they don't, which they don't, this is where your lawsuit starts. Third round letter comes back and says, oh, well, we verified it. We're not doing it. This is a frivolous attempt to remove an item that's on your credit report. We're not doing anything else. Great. Send the third round letter, certified mail, return receipt with the other two letters in it. They come back and say, oh, we already proved it's verified and we're not doing it. Fine. Go to court, lock them up, they'll take it off. Pretty easy, actually. FTC. When you say you go to court, you're talking small claims court. It's not like you have to hire uh, a huge attorney. It's about $125. Yeah, man. It's not, it's not if you really want to go that route. The, what, what, I'll tell you what works for me and what's been working for the last, last six years. is I, I will send this round three letter out four or five times. The same letter. And, and there, there is a point where you get in this process where you will, you'll stop. You send the first round letter, you get a few things removed. You send the second round letter, you get a few more things removed. You send the third round letter, you get one or two or three things removed. So I'll tell my client, if you're not in a window to get a house, or you're not in your time frame, not coming up a butt against you, let's resend this letter. It's the same letter with the other two things. Now one or two other things gets removed, and we'll keep sending it. And this letter will finally come back with no removals. And then I'll send one additional letter. <coughs> and if it's no removals, the process is over. If the client wants to go to court, and let's say that, that this is legit. Let's say this is a tax lien that was not yours. And the credit bureau comes back and says, this is yours. And they come back and say, this is yours. And you go to court and you file it. And you can go to the judge and say, your honor, here's my certified mail. This is my first request. They said it was mine. It's not. Here's my second request. Here's my third request. Here's the documentation. This is me. This is my social. This is not. They haven't proved they're in violation of my civil rights. And I'm in financial distress. There's not a judge in the land that would give you an award. I mean, I've had clients that have done it. And I've had a client who, who, who took Equifax to court, and Equifax, it was two days later, they sent a certified letter saying, we're, you know, we're removing it completely. All three things he, he filed for, like that. But they don't want to go to court, because they didn't do what they are supposed to. Yes, sir? I was going to say, the, the client who uh, took the court and took the collection company to court, because the credit bureau will send an attorney but no credit, no collection agency ever. They they removed it right away. Yeah, you know, I haven't had a client that had any. Has anybody showed up yet? I've only, I've had seven clients that have done it. I've had two clients that actually ended up in court, and both times, both credit bureaus weren't represented. And the judge, and the thing was, the judge gave him an award for, for one for two of them for five thousand, the other one for twenty five hundred. So he got a judgment against the two, the credit bureau. So he, was, he said to the judge, he said, Judge, where do I put this on the credit bureau's credit report? <laughs> the judge said, I'm going to use that next time. 
So here are some results, and I apologize. I have a huge file, and um, I rolled out of the house early. Uh, I live up in, actually up in Delaware, and I came home and I left the file because uh, I was going to let you see it firsthand. But, you know, these are some of the things that, that I did for a client. I mean, you look at the civil judgments. Again, they, they couldn't prove them, so they just deleted them. Midland Credit Collection Management Company, one of the worst. I mean, these were, this, was the, this was the first round letter. She loved me. Of course, she bought her house. You know, my, I, it's a two-edged sword with what I do because I help people get out of debt, but then I get them right back. Or I help them get their credit scores up, get them right back in debt. <laughs> um, what's this one? Oh, here's another one. And I want to show this with state. <coughs> and this is what you get a lot of times. They, they'll send out a form letter, and then you send the second letter, and they'll go, oh, it's no longer on file. They didn't delete it. They just said, yeah. And, they, and, the, and the reason they do this is because, oh, it was, we, we overlooked it. But now after we reviewed it, we see it's no longer there. Instead of saying they deleted it, they'll say it's just no longer on file. So, so it's actually deleted. It is deleted. Report, but to protect but them, they'll just say it's no longer on the file. No longer on file. Exactly. OK. So I, I blew through, nah, not too bad. Yes? I have a young client, she's young, she's just starting, and she got herself into a little trouble because of a living with situation where both were on the lease, but he was paying 